Welcome back, folks. Today we dive into the heart-pounding recap of the intense and thrilling movie Black Crab, a story of courage, sacrifice, and an unrelenting mission in the face of danger. The film begins with a flashback scene featuring a woman named EDH, who finds herself stuck in a traffic jam with her daughter Vanya. They listen to a distressing news report on the car radio about casualties in the civil war that has erupted in their country. Suddenly, two armed men arrive and unleash violence upon the innocent civilians, ultimately abducting Vanya. Several years later, EDH, now a soldier, arrives at a train station. A lieutenant greets her, but instead of taking her to a military base, he escorts her to a refugee camp. The lieutenant departs, leaving EDH on her own, and as soon as he disappears, she comes under attack from the desperate refugees. Thinking swiftly, EDH takes cover beneath a truck and defends herself by firing at the refugees who are assaulting her. EDH successfully escapes in the truck and drives to the military base. Upon arrival, she encounters three soldiers from the F-28 unit, Karimi, Maik, and Granvik who is a skilled sniper. Just then, Captain Forsberg arrives and leads them to a meeting with Colonel Rod for a briefing. The colonel explains that a significant portion of the Stockholm archipelago is now covered in ice, making vehicle transport impossible. He emphasizes that the only viable means of crossing this frozen terrain is by ice skating which is the reason they've been summoned. Colonel Rod goes on to reveal that there's only one way to halt the ongoing civil war, and that entails delivering two capsules to the research facility known as Odo by traversing the icy expanse. He names this mission Black Crab. EDH raises a valid concern, stating that crossing the treacherous ice seems nearly impossible and more like a suicide mission. Rod is displeased with her input and instructs everyone except for EDH to exit the room. Once alone with EDH, Colonel Rod reveals a photograph of her daughter Vanya, found in a refugee camp, suggesting that Vanya is still alive. He offers EDH assurance that they will help her locate Vanya, but in exchange, she must undertake this mission. Fueled by the hope of reuniting with her daughter, EDH ultimately relinquishes her resistance and agrees to embark on the mission. Later, as they are in the midst of packing for their mission, Captain Forsberg arrives and supplies them with essential items. She informs them that they need to depart early the next morning. However, their plans are a abruptly disrupted when the military base comes under attack in the middle of the night. In a frantic bid to save their lives, they evade a barrage of bullets and manage to escape the base unscathed, where they rendezvous with Colonel Rod. Lieutenant Nyland is also present, and Rod entrusts them with the capsules, emphasizing the critical importance of delivering them to the research base without allowing them to fall into enemy hands. Captain Forsberg assumes command of the mission, and they set out on their journey. They skate through the night and pause to rest in the morning. Suddenly, the ice gives way at one point, and Forsberg plunges into the frigid water. Clutching the capsules, EDH swiftly leaps into the water to retrieve them from his pockets. Although they attempt to rescue Forsberg, he tragically succumbs to the icy depths. With the mission's success being paramount, they regrettably leave Forsberg's body in the water and resume their skating journey. After Ed's chilling plunge into the icy waters, she begins to feel unwell. Fortunately, they come across an empty house nearby and promptly take her inside, quickly kindling a fire to help her warm up. While gathered around the comforting warmth of the fire, Lieutenant Nyland initiates an argument with EDH, accusing her of prioritizing the retrieval of the capsules over attempting to save Forsberg. EDH retorts that the mission holds the utmost significance for her, and although she made an effort to rescue Forsberg, her attempts proved unsuccessful. The heated exchange continues, and EDH starts to harbor suspicions about Nyland, especially since he wasn't originally assigned to this mission. The soldier originally chosen for the task mysteriously disappeared at the last moment. Additionally, EDH finds it curious that Nyland doesn't seem as concerned about the capsules. Malik intervenes, putting an end to their argument before it escalates any further. Ultimately, they decide to designate Nyland as their new leader and opt to rest for a while. EDH is roused from her slumber by peculiar sounds and rushes outside to discover Karimi engaged in a conversation on the radio with someone. In that moment, she spots an enemy helicopter approaching directly toward their location. Swiftly, she retreats inside and wakes the others, urgently conveying the impending danger. They hastily vacate the house and seek shelter outdoors, just as the helicopter releases a bomb on the dwelling they had been occupying. Once the helicopter departs, EDH points her gun at Karimi, harboring suspicions that he might be in communication with the enemy through the radio. Karimi explains that he was merely speaking with his girlfriend, since he couldn't do so within their military unit, which had a designated radio operator. He clarifies that he was merely trying to ascertain if she was still alive, but his words meet with skepticism from the rest of the group. Instead of executing him on the spot, they opt to bring him along while disarming him of his weapons. They resume their journey, skating forward throughout the day. As night descends, they arrive at a peculiar section of the ice where they can see numerous lifeless bodies suspended beneath the frozen surface. 
The gruesome sight shocks them all, but before they can investigate further, another helicopter spots them and initiates an attack. They scatter in different directions with remarkable agility, successfully evading the hail of bullets and finding refuge where the helicopter's gaze couldn't reach them. Eventually, the helicopter departs, prompting them to opt for a terrestrial route. After walking for some time, they gain entry into the home of an elderly couple who graciously permits them to stay for a while. The elderly hosts even provide them with a meal, and as they sit around the dining table eating, EDH inadvertently drops her spoon. When she stoops to retrieve it, she stumbles upon a startling discovery. The old man has hidden a firearm beneath the table. Before she can alert the others, the elderly man opens fire with the weapon. The soldiers swiftly take cover as Malik and Nyland retaliate with their firearms, regrettably resulting in the immediate demise of the elderly couple. Tragically, a stray bullet strikes Karimi who succumbs on the spot. In a poignant turn of events, they receive a radio call on Karimi's device from his girlfriend, revealing that he had not betrayed them. They bid farewell to Karimi and resume their icebound journey. After a while, they find themselves compelled to halt, as Malik had also sustained a gunshot wound during the earlier firefight. Nyland endeavors to administer morphine to alleviate Malik's pain, but Malik declines, expressing concern that they may require it later and prefers to forego it for the time being. They press on with their journey and come across an abandoned ship resting on the icy expanse. Soldiers venture inside the vessel to investigate, but EDH stresses the urgency of reaching their destination swiftly. Malik's condition worsens due to his injury, rendering it increasingly difficult for him to continue the journey alongside them. Garnvik expresses his dissatisfaction with the situation and decides to open one of the capsules, revealing a label indicating that it contains a contagious virus. At that moment, Malik intervenes, taking the capsule from Garnvik's hand, and informs him that this substance won't only bring an end to the war, but also to everything else. Soon, everyone scours the ship in the hopes of uncovering something of use. EDH ascends to the ship's deck, and while scanning the surroundings through binoculars, catches sight of a distant light. Just then, the sound of a gunshot rings out, prompting her to hurry back inside. There, she discovers that Malik has taken his own life due to the worsening of his condition. EDH informs the rest of the group that she spotted a light in the distance, raising the possibility that it could belong to enemy soldiers. She speculates that they might have heard the gunshot as well. Without waiting for input from the others, she departs from the ship on her own. As EDH continues to skate solo, she observes a change in the ice's surface. The thick ice gives way to a fragile, thin layer. Despite the risky situation, she resolves to press on. However, the ice eventually fractures, leaving her stranded in the frigid water. Just in the nick of time, Granvik and Nyland arrive and rescue her using a rope. They then decide to tether themselves together with the same rope as they attempt to navigate the fragile ice. Out of nowhere, an assailant opens fire on them, but Granvik reacts swiftly, employing his sniper skills to neutralize the threat. They proceed to a nearby military camp, only to discover frozen corpses of soldiers. Realizing they are the sole survivors at this base, the trio opts to spend the night there. As they sit in the camp, Granvik shares a haunting recollection from his past, when he and his friend were captured by the enemy and coerced into digging their own graves. During the ordeal, Granvik tumbled into the grave while his friend was tragically shot, alongside many others. The enemy remains unaware of Granvik's survival and leaves him alone beneath the corpses. He was compelled to claw his way out from under the bodies while witnessing them being devoured by rats. This harrowing experience drove him to enlist in the military, fueled by a fervent desire for revenge on behalf of his fallen friend. The following morning, EDH awakens from a distressing nightmare in which she envisions Vanya's death. To her shock, she discovers that Nyland has absconded with the capsules. In a sudden twist, EDH and Granvik come under attack from a group of enemy soldiers. Tragically, Granvik is fatally shot, and EDH herself sustains a gunshot wound. Nevertheless, she manages to eliminate all the enemy soldiers who assail them. Following this bloody encounter, EDH continues her journey in solitude and eventually catches up with Nyland. To her dismay, Nyland discloses that he has forsaken the mission and now intends to destroy the capsules. EDH, left with no alternative, shoots him and wrests the capsules from his possession. She leaves Nyland, injured on the ice, and resumes her skating. However, she soon succumbs to hallucinations of Malik and Forsberg before collapsing on the ice, just as a group of soldiers arrives on horseback. The next time EDH regains consciousness, she finds herself in an infirmary, suffering from frostbite on her extremities. She discovers that she has successfully reached the base with the capsules, completing her mission. Soldiers at the base commend her, bestowing upon her medals and promoting her to the rank of second lieutenant, an honor bestowed by the base commander, Nord. Nyland is also among the recovered soldiers present. As EDH inquires about Vanya, she is confronted with the revelation that she had been deceived and manipulated into participating in the mission. Consumed by anger upon learning the truth, EDH launches an assault on base commander Nord. However, Nyland intervenes, guiding her inside where he offers comfort as she weeps. 
Gradually, EDH arrives at a decision to thwart the spread of the lethal virus by destroying the capsules. She persuades Nyland to join her in a final effort to dispose of them. Nyland consents, and together, they proceed to the laboratory where the virus is stored. By triggering the evacuation alarm and donning hazmat suits, they manage to coerce a scientist into surrendering the capsules before making their escape amidst the fleeing crowds. Eid's injury hinders her mobility, compelling Nyland to leave her behind as he secures seats on departing helicopters. As she sits there, Nord arrives with a contingent of soldiers. EDH reveals that she has linked the capsules to an unpinned grenade. Nord attempts to appeal to her by mentioning Vanya, but EDH resolutely declines, expressing that it's the only thing she ever thinks about. Without hesitation, she steps off the cliff with the grenade, detonating it in midair. Her lifeless body plunges into the sea where she reunites with her departed daughter, and they embrace. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe.